When you're working a radio station in a closed operation, how do you know that the station you are working is actually a part of the response and not some hostile who is trying to interfere? We're going to talk about authentication in this episode of Radio KD8TTE. Stick around. Black one, black one. Before we cover the procedure, we're going to talk about a couple of fundamental concepts. The first is identification. That's nothing more than saying who you are or giving the call sign of the station that you are operating. Related to that is authentication. Authentication is a process by which you prove something. In the case of working a closed operation in an emergency response, for example, with a known set of stations, you want to make sure that those stations that are responding to your transmissions and that are giving you information are actually insiders. Authentication is a way to make that happen. A related concept is encryption. We're not going to talk about encryption today, but I'm going to point out what it is and why it is different from authentication because it's often confused and there are some related techniques. Encryption is the process of taking some text, some information, some message, and turning it into a form that will not be readable unless the person trying to read the message has the key. It's kind of like a lock for information. The procedure that we're going to describe today is the one that we use on the Black Swan Net. The Black Swan Net we've covered in other episodes, but it's a radio net that works on HF, is meant to cover the state of Ohio and those that are nearby, to be able to allow stations to communicate in a way that is not just the traditional voice methods and CW methods, but is going to serve the modern needs of agencies responding to emergencies emergencies, and disasters. The Black Swan Net, for the most part, operates as an open net. That is to say, any station that has authorization to transmit on the frequency is welcome to join. Uh, We do have a set of stations that normally operates, however, those that we expect to be there. And any time that we are working in a response situation, we expect that we're going to know the stations that are participating. So the way that we make authentication work is with a table known as a dryad table. Uh, The technical name for it is KTC1400D. That's the model that we're using. It's essentially a one-time pad. It's shared among everybody who is a legitimate operator of that particular net or of that particular circuit for a particular operation. This system is very straightforward. It's been in use for a long time, and it is still used because it is effective for its purpose. We're not going to go into the history of these tables and how to generate them securely, but we're going to focus on use for the purpose of this procedure. The thing to remember is that the Dryad table, it is a secret. So only the stations that are meant to be part of a particular operation should have a copy of it. The other thing to remember is that every time that part of it is transmitted over the air, someone who is listening has the ability to start putting the pieces together. And so it's going to be effective. That is to say, it's going to be secure only for a limited period of time, and that has to do with how many transmissions have been made. The other thing that's important to remember is that it is subject to a replay attack, which is to say if you issue a particular challenge and get a response, then an attacker is going to be able to give that same response if given the same challenge. So the security of the system is also going to depend on when you challenge another station, make sure that you vary the challenge. Don't always use the same one, and that way you're going to go through the table, and each challenge that you issue is going to have some other response to it. So we're going to use a simplified uh, table for the purpose of this video. We're going to show only a couple of rows. One of the things we need to know is how we get into this procedure. That's going to be done with a procedure word, a pro word. That pro word is 
authenticate. That is an instruction to the other station to get out that dryad and make sure that they find the right part of the page and that they respond appropriately. When that response comes, it's going to be using another pro word, and that is I authenticate. So now it's a response to the instruction indicating what you are saying back. It is possible also for there to be mutual authentication. So the responding station can say, I authenticate, give the response, and then follow it with authenticate, and then give another challenge. In that way, the station that issues the challenge not only hears a response back, but also is challenged and must issue a response back. Both stations at that point having heard successful responses, correct responses to the challenge, will have some degree of assurance that they are talking each to legitimate members of the group. The way that this works is very simple. The station that is issuing a challenge simply needs to choose an arbitrary row out of this table. You'll notice that the beginning of each row has a letter and that's going to be A through some letter. In this example, it's just A through F. The station that is going to issue the challenge chooses an arbitrary row. Let's say we choose B, that is Bravo. After we have chosen a row, then we choose an arbitrary letter out of the row. So if we look in row Bravo, reading left to right, we go in a little bit and we will find a, alpha. The station that's going to issue the challenge now has the row and the arbitrarily chosen letter out of that row. This is the pair that is used for the challenge. In this case, bravo, alpha. The way that the challenge is voiced is for you to call the station that you are challenging. So, for example, if you are station alpha, 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 you mean to challenge station bravo 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 the procedure is bravo 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 this is alpha 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 authenticate bravo alpha over station bravo 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 is then going to get the challenge the challenge bravo alpha allows the operator to find row bravo and then to read left to right in row Bravo. Let's find the letter alpha, there it is. And we go down one row. So the letter directly below A in row B is the letter G. The response then is going to be G. The response is voiced Alpha, 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 this is Bravo, Bravo, Bravo. I authenticate Gulf. Over. At that point, the station may respond. Authentication is correct, or more correctly, Roger. And then you know that you've got a station that's authenticated. Mutual authentication is possible by not saying over right away, but also by following the response with an instruction. For example... Alpha, 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 this is Bravo, Bravo, Bravo. I authenticate Gulf. Authenticate Echo November. Over. At that point, the station that initially gave the challenge, Station Alpha, is going to respond first to the authentication. If it's correct, Roger. And then we'll continue by following the instruction that has been given by Station Bravo, Bravo, Bravo. The challenge was Echo November. So the response, we find Row Echo. Read left to right. Let's find November. There it is. One below. It is Zulu. So the response is going to be Bravo, Bravo, Bravo. This is Alpha, Alpha, Alpha. Roger, I authenticate Zulu. Over. At this point, both station Alpha, Alpha, Alpha and bravo, 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 have completed the process of authentication. We know that both of them have a copy of this particular dryad table, and uh, we can infer from that, because of our security procedures, that they are legitimate members of the group.
and that is the process of authentication. It's very straightforward. There's no need to make it more complicated than it is. The security of this procedure is dependent upon making sure that only members of the group have a copy of that dryad table. Uh, as I described in the beginning, the more that it is used, the more that an adversary who is listening to all of those transmissions will be able to start reconstructing what that codebook looks like. And so we are in this way able to ensure that everybody who is responding and responding correctly is a legitimate member of the group. Of course, any member of the group may impersonate another member of the group because these are not tied to individuals or to stations. This authentication procedure is tied to the table and it is control over the table that allows us to be sure that we are talking to people who are in the group. Among the people in the group, we have to trust them when we are using this procedure. And that's authentication with Dryad. I hope that you found this helpful. If you are in or near Ohio, please join the Black Swan Net and you'll have an opportunity to be able to practice this. If you're not from the area and you want to start a uh, group of your own, then hopefully this will give you some ideas for how to do that. I'm going to include a link from the description below uh, to some information about the Dryad table, the use of them, and uh, how you can actually generate some. There's a few online generators that you might find helpful. So I hope you enjoyed this, and I look forward to seeing you again. Share the video if you found it to be helpful. And uh, in the meantime, this is Radio KDA TTE. 